ever asked you the question, what do you want to learn today? How do you want to learn it? Who asks these questions to students? I personally was never asked this question, and so you can imagine my confusion when I had to ask it at my first job as a teaching assistant in Georgetown University. I was a TA or a teaching assistant for an economics class, and every week TAs are meant to hold these optional revision sessions. And out of a class of 170 students, almost no one would show up to my sessions. Was it me? Was it the content? What was preventing these students from attending these sessions? As midterm season approaches, still at my revision sessions, the population was one, me. And so one day after lecture, a French student grabs me and says, hey, can we do a quick recap of this topic? She says to me in French, je préfère qu'on apprenne l'économie en français, c'est plus facile pour moi. I prefer to learn economics in, in French. It's easier for me. I was so happy that despite what language, I wanted to help. Luckily, I do speak French, it's my mother tongue, but it had seen very little practice, unless of course you count listening to French rap songs in the shower. This French student and I worked for almost three hours and I could see this shy student communicating, asking questions one after another. She seemed so excited that she was grasping the content. The following week, I had more requests and strange requests. I had a basketball player who asked me to uh, study on the basketball court. He said it helped him visualize content. Then I had an a cappella singer who said, can we learn over a phone call? She preferred zero physical contact. A musically inclined person, they like to hear voices and sounds. She didn't need to visualize. And then I had a young freshman who wanted to learn demand and supply in the context of college applications. He even persuaded me to set up a meeting with Georgetown admissions to test out the idea of inelasticity. And so by the end of that month, I, I was working with almost 38 students with more requests. And it was making me wonder how important personalization of learning was. But was that all? Was there something else? Since at the time, I didn't have much teaching experience and in fact wanted to be an NBA sports interviewer, I did what I knew best, I asked. So I asked these students, you know, how they wanted to learn and, and, and you could tell that they were quite confused with that question because it wasn't asked to them that often. And yet it was met with a lot of enthusiasm. The lessons really didn't feel like lessons, they felt like interactive conversations between the student and me. And I thought for a second, they should be involved, students, right? Parents select education for their students or their kids, and every selection should have some kind of flexibility, no? Think about buying shoes. You go buy a pair of shoes, I go buy a pair of shoes. Do we both opt for the same size, style, design? Probably not, because we have different functional needs and desires, right? I would never opt for heels, high or low because I'm clumsy and dysfunctional. But by that same logic and by that same token, shouldn't students have that flexibility in how they curate their learning? Shouldn't they have that autonomy? What on earth is autonomy? Autonomy is a set of laws or rules set either by the student or someone else. In education, in my view, autonomy is a scenario where the student has control or ownership over four things. Learning material, method, content, and speed. And so teachers are still involved as the facilitators or guides of the study. But the students are also dominant decision makers in this journey. And so it's effectively a partnership between and among students and teachers. Autonomy should not be understood as a black or white term, you have autonomy, I don't have autonomy, but rather you can have a degree of autonomy by learning using your preferences, by applying your own speed, by learning using your passions, or even by negotiating your curriculum with your teacher. And autonomy is absolutely crucial because it means student involvement. And student involvement, much more often than not, 
means higher learning outcomes. I gotta tell you guys about this story. A young man named Christian, he's 12 years old, very, very sharp, but completely uninterested in school. Very interested in football. I mean, who isn't? But we asked him, what do you wanna do this summer? You know, you have two months off, what would you like to do? And he said he found everything in school very boring, but if he had to choose, he would say he needs to brush up on his maths, specifically statistics. And so his mom asks him this really interesting question. She says, Christian, how do you wanna learn statistics? And he says he wants to learn it using football, applying offside percentages, goals scored, number of shots kicked. And he wants to compare these two teams to prove to his father that one team is better than the other. And you fast forward four weeks later, and Christian has calculated this entire database of the means, the modes, the medians of the top players, not only in these two teams, but in the whole league. And then he presents his thesis to his father, who is extremely impressed by his whole process. I want to share this example because it shows something important. It shows not only that Christian's learning outcomes have strengthened, in fact, the semester after he topped his math class, but it does something in Christian's mind, in Christian's mindset. He is more interested because he is more invested, right? And so instead of saying, Christian learns statistics using this method, he says Christian uses statistics in his own method. And that's really powerful because of what it does is it creates something quite rare, unfortunately, these days, a desire to learn. Let me tell you about one more example, and this is a brilliant young student that I, I watched at a distance. Her name is Portia, she's 17 years old. Very smart academically, but she said she always felt stuck. She used the word stuck a lot of times. She said, I'm not sure when I wanna study, I'm not sure what I wanna be when I grow up, I'm not really sure what's my purpose, what's my why. So in an effort to kind of find this purpose, she says, okay, I'm gonna look for online internships so I can figure out and get some exposure in these different industries. And to her surprise, she's unable to find many online internship options. So she decides, and this is quite remarkable at age 17, to start an app for high school students to find internships and they can swipe for their preferences. Are you interested in gaming? Okay, great, you can get a gaming internship that's five meters down. And in one month, she's able to launch this app and she has five companies on board supporting over 100 students aged 15 to 19 with free online internships. And so where did Portia's autonomy lie in this case? This is an example with no curriculum, with no teacher even, right? And yet Portia is able to take a problem that she personally faced and look at it as an opportunity to solve that problem. And she does something quite remarkable. She decides to target companies that target kids as their customers. Because her reasoning was, why would companies encourage kids to enter in there, right? So I might as well target those companies that are looking or valuing kid opinions and perspectives. And you can see that her learning speed in that one month really accelerated. In fact, she said she's never learned that quickly over any period of her life. And she really went from the mindset of, I can't find an internship for myself, to let me help all the kids my age who are stuck find an internship. From my personal journey to autonomy really changed my life. I usually ne never share this story, and I'm not sure why, but in grade eight, I was asked to repeat the year. I had transitioned from a French system to an American system, and, and the transition was really difficult. But let's just say the results were very similar. In the French system, I was last in class. In the American system, I was also last in class. And my parents were seriously worried. I remember one day overhearing my dad in the kitchen telling my mom, you know, does Davy have learning disabilities? At the end of grade eight, my homeroom teacher 
super awesome guy by the name of Mr. Vlantis came up to me and he said, Davy, why are you always staring outside the window at the flowers when I'm teaching algebra? And I tried not to laugh. And then he looked at me in a kind but sort of strict way as well. And he said, Davy, you really need to take ownership over your learning journey. Because if you don't, it will be instructed to you. And that's not going to be rewarding or special. And I remember this striking like a super strong chord in me and running into the principal's office and saying, please, let me go to grade nine. Please, I promise to work hard. And three and a half years later, I graduated valedictorian. So I share this example not because uh, I was the smartest in class. I was far from it, believe me. But because of what autonomy did to my journey, how it changed my mindset. And as trivial as these examples sound, I was learning on my own terms. I couldn't choose the content, but I could choose the how. I could choose how I was trying to grasp that content. I was writing notes in color-coordinated formats. I was writing you know, my math formulas. I struggled a lot with math on um, my bedroom door. I was rehearsing French poetry with my grandmother, who, by the way, did not speak a word of French. And she would always be like, good job, good job. And I just remember being empowered and feeling like my learning journey was my own, not someone else's. Education. What's education meant to do? It's meant to prepare us for a future that we cannot really grasp yet. And yet, we are delivering education as if we've grasped the future. Ironic, no? One of my dear friends told me that education, it puts you in conditions of certainty. It feeds you these certain structures that if you do this, you will get this output, and so forth. And as you and, and I very well know, Life, it has a lot of uncertainty, right? And so autonomy helps you deal with that uncertainty. I think a lot of us can feel that education feels rigid or structured or linear. Why does education feel so linear when life is not? By adding autonomy, you start adding personal things to your journey. You start adding your learning speed, your learning style. And then you start making it your learning DNA. I think we've all been a Porsche feeling stuck or a Christian uninterested, or perhaps we've all had a Mr. Vlantis, that one coach or that one teacher that truly changes your life. And so everyone watching today or listening today, I would like you to pause and ask yourself one question. How much autonomy do you feel like you have in your life? Give it a score. Five out of 10, four out of 10. And then ask yourselves, is it enough? And if the answer is yes, then I encourage you to continue on that path. But if the answer is no, then I encourage you to sprinkle more autonomy in your lives, whether it's learning about yourself, learning about how you learn, or like Portia, learning on the road when you're trying to solve a problem that truly needs fixing. I think it's about time we examine, or rather re-examine, not only the what in education, but the who. Are we as students involved? Do we as students have a voice? Do we as students have a say? I think it's about time we should. And we absolutely must. Thank you so much. <laughs>